All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Kagan Dunlap Podcast. Today, we're joined by Riley T. Jack. Thank you again for taking the time to come here out of your busy schedule. I know you're one of the busiest people I know. You're traveling all over the world, like all over the country to different events all over the place. I saw a video of you in D.C. just the other day, and now you're down here in North Carolina. Like uh, one of the busiest Marines I know, like by far. Um, and and I and I'm extremely busy, so I know that you're like slammed all the time. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time again to come out here and and yeah. yeah talk with me in this in this little small place here that we were able to set aside to to do this so thanks yeah i came just to north carolina just for you so. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually, what we'll tell people <laughs> yeah there's she's actually busy doing some some work related stuff down here so i was able to just like kind of like it just things lined up just right where it's like hey she was able to break away from work for just a little bit so we could come talk and people could kind of get to know her story a little bit more and i could kind of get to know your story yeah. a little bit more too which is something i've wanted to do because I'm so busy all the time. It's hard for me to like really invest a lot of energy into like learning about all these various tons of individuals that have so many unique perspectives and experiences around the, around the DOD and the Marine Corps and just like society in general. Cause I'm just like so slammed like yourself all the time. So, yeah. um, yeah, I, I wanted to start off with, uh, some stuff like, like, where are you from originally? Mm -hmm. So I was born in San Diego, so I'll claim that on my birth certificate. Okay. But other than that, I was actually... Uh, grew up in Indiana. So Carmel, Indiana is home. Uh, that's where I went to high school and everything like that. So you you were born in San Diego. Does that mean that your parents were in the military or anything? Actually, no. No. So yeah, weird. Um, but no, my dad was a professional baseball player. So really? Yep. In the like the what's it called? The uh, MLB. <laughs> wow. I couldn't even remember. <laughs> See, this is how full my brain is. I just like stuff's poured out of my ears. So the M so your dad played for the MLB? He was in AAA. Mm -hmm. In AAA, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he has a baseball card, like, everything. No so kidding. I grew up thinking, like, my dad was, like, a superhero. Like, kids would send baseball cards for him to sign, and that was, like, not, I wouldn't say it's a regular thing, but happened a couple times a year, where, yeah. like, dad, you're so cool. <laughs> did, did you have any of your dad's baseball cards? I, we have one at the house. Okay, is yeah. it, like, framed and stuff like that? Honestly, it should be. Yeah, <laughs> you ought to send it to no. PSA, have them grade it for you, and then... It'll be just, you can mount it in like a plastic, hard yeah. plastic frame or something. Yeah. That's cool. So you, how long are you in uh, San Diego for then? Only about two years. So About two years? Very, very brief. My mom and dad um, at the time both worked for a big pharmaceutical company and the okay. headquarters was in Indianapolis. Gotcha. So they, that's why they moved out there. My dad had never seen snow. Like he was California boy. Oh. Um, yeah. My mom was from Kentucky, so she was familiar with the Midwest, but... They head over to Indiana. Okay. I, I still get mad at them about it because I'm like, man, like I could have grown up in California <laughs> playing softball, like <laughs> like beach kid life. Come yeah. on. Um, but instead, I got the lovely Midwest and cornfields. OK, well, yeah, you. I feel like you could blend in pretty much anywhere you go at this point, just because you're pretty person. You, you have a, you're very personable, mm -hmm. easy to talk to. Um, I feel like and you do have like a kind of a California girl vibe to you to a certain degree. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I don't, I don't know. know either, that's just kind of how, that's how I, I've met a lot of people from California, especially when I was stationed in Hawaii that, you know, there's a there's a vibe to it for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, a kind of like a, like you seem like the type of person that would prefer the beach over the mountains. Would that be correct? This is this is true. OK, OK, mm -hmm. then that then I'm then I'm in the right the right <laughs> ballpark there. All right. So you were in, in San Diego for two years, then you moved to Indiana. And then how long were you in Indiana for? Up until college, yeah. So my okay. my goal was to get out of Indiana again. Okay, <laughs> so want to get away from the cornfields. I, I was like, I'm over this. Um, and in my head, I really wanted to go down south. So like, I, I had I did the California thing, I did the Midwest thing, and I was like, I want to be like a Southern girl. I want to drive a truck. I want to like wear the boots, the whole thing. Okay. But I ended up in D.C. So uh, I don't know how that. <laughs> and so where did you go to Cal uh, to college? At George Washington University. How was in that? D.C. Yeah, it was awesome. Like I. When I was 15 years old, I accepted a college softball scholarship to play Division One softball. No kidding. Mm -hmm. So you played softball a lot growing up then? or All the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're big time like athlete, big into like sports, mm -hmm. very um, big into like fitness, I would imagine as oh. well. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I was that girl that my dad was like, you will lift weights and like this is cool. Good for him. And I was like, okay. Sounds like a good man. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then in high school, my high school was massive. I had over 5,000 kids. So people think like, oh, Indiana must be this like small cornfield, whatever. But we were a big suburb of Indianapolis. So okay. like I said, 5,000 kids, multiple, multiple people on signing day, probably over a hundred kids that went division one. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
So it was massive. Um, and I played multiple sports throughout that time, but softball was like my focus. But mm-hmm. we had a class in high school for weightlifting, like in the middle of the day, um, cause we were a block schedule. So nice. one day this, one day that, and it was an hour and a half of weightlifting. So it was literally me, the football team, the ba- the basketball team with their coaches. And then yeah. like me and a softball girl. So it was like cool to like lift weights. It was cool to like move, but yeah. I still was trying to navigate that as a young girl and like what that looked like. Yeah. Well, that's a tough thing because I think that especially sure ladies in the, that are into fitness like oftentimes there's a there's a lot of stuff that goes into that because people are concerned about you know if i lift weights is this going to make me look a certain way that i don't want to look you know what i mean like i know there's a lot of you know people are very particular about especially women about how their you know their appearance i mean guys are too but like as far as people are afraid of looking maybe manly or you know weird stuff like that and and i understand like because people want to still everybody wants to feel like they're attractive to the uh, you know to the opposite whatever they're attracted yeah. to right yeah and um you know i would always encourage anybody regardless of who they are or what they look like to get in the gym cuz not only will you look better and you'll feel better um i mean i personally it's like i like a lot of people work out cuz it's like hey i want to look good naked <laughs> <laughs> that is like, that's a, that is that's a, thing. a fair <laughs> that's a fair thing like why wouldn't you want to you know and then on top of it it's just great for mental health like cuz you're getting all those endorphins mm-hmm. You're reducing your cortisol levels in your brain. You're doing a lot of good stuff. And it's just good for longevity because, like, as you age, it'll help kind of, like, slow that progression, Um, especially as you get older, you know, in your 50s and 60s when you've got, like, your activities of daily living and stuff that become more difficult if you haven't been training consistently. And and it's just it. there's so many benefits to it. Like, I would I would definitely offer to everybody if you're not interested in health and wellness to get into it just – start don't don't worry about what people are thinking mm-hmm. about you while you're in the gym just go get after it ask for help don't be afraid to ask people for help and advice because like that that is honestly that probably saved my life personally yeah. like i my whole life sir is that's like my meditation now yeah. you know so um obviously you you know you look like you're in pretty good shape you probably still work out today i imagine you do a lot of weightlifting still uh, a lot of weightlifting so training for bob so which i know we'll get into later yeah, yeah, but yeah. um yeah, yeah i'm very interested about yeah that we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. touch that piece for sure but like weightlifting has always been really big and that's something like to all the women out there like strong is beautiful like for sure and i know growing Great. up it was like thigh gap was like you have to have really skinny thighs and like right like that was like the <laughs> picture in our mind of like the Victoria's Secret model, right? And yeah. now it's like shifted to where like women are like big in CrossFit and that's cool and that's fit and that's attractive. And I think it means something for women to be able to hold your own. Yeah. You know, to walk into places and be like, yeah, like I lift more weights than you, dude. Yeah. Like, you're like, you're like, <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. bench more than you and squat more than you, dude. Right? And did lift more than you. <laughs> but and like you were saying, like working out creates these positive endorphins that you can't find anywhere else. And so it's really hard to work out and be sad. It's really hard to work out and yeah. like be like, I mean, you could kind of be angry, I guess, but to not like, True. right. Like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like, yeah. But generally like it's, it's positive and you leave feeling all kinds of like refreshed. And Agreed. so that's another thing too. Like women, like I see way too many women just doing cardio. Like I really, really encourage women, like pick up those weights. If you don't know, there's people out there that want to help you. Yeah. And, like lifting weights and like strong, being strong is beautiful. Like it's a cool thing. Yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, the thing is that people, a lot of people don't realize that like, okay, cardio does burn. You can burn a lot of calories. You can track mm-hmm. your calories and all that stuff and it'll help burn off calories. But at the end of the day, like weightlifting and doing like, like, musculoskeletal lifts will burn fat over longer periods of time anyway which a lot of the time that's why a lot of women get into lifting because they want to burn fat Mm -hmm. because they want to look better in a bikini or they want to look better in their swimsuit or they want to look better in a dress or they want to look better in whatever given thing and guys do the same thing guys want to look better when they're in shorts and a t-shirt guys want to look like they're jacked like they're strong like they're you know a capable man you know because that's it that's also attractive to you know whoever they're looking for right Mm -hmm. um so I definitely highly encourage, like, I would I, I would say doing cardio and weightlifting together are the the perfect combo. Do mm-hmm. both of them, and it'll and you're more likely to reach your goals and and obtain those goals probably at a quicker rate as long as you're able to stay you know consistent with it. And obviously, diet is a huge part of that, which you can always ask for help. And there's tons and tons of resources all over the place for that piece too. But um, okay, so you. Went to George Washington University. What did you major in when you were in college? I majored in political science. Okay. 
Um, and I also minored in Russian, which is a really fun fact that Russian. a lot of people know. Interesting. They're like, you're a Russian spy. You thought I was Calif- from California. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're right. Russian. Okay. Um, so that in, in history. So I'm actually a little bit of a nerd, believe it or not. Okay. I love history. What kind of history? Military history. Military history. Okay. Right. And actually political history. So or like I study political science and I did a lot about compar- comparative politics. And so looking at different war prone countries. And so the history behind that, right? Like why are certain regions of the world the way they are? Where, yeah. where did people come from and migrate to to yeah. create some of the long lasting historical traditions that we see now that maybe the con- our country like the United States doesn't have because mm-hmm. in terms to places over in Europe and stuff, we're barely new yes. compared to how long they've been there and yeah. the cultural um, upbringings that they've had. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's like... I mean, learning a lot about that stuff will kind of teach you about why the world is the way that it is right now. Because, for example, if you knew about the history between Armenia and Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, for example, like they have a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on over there right now that's been going on for decades and decades. Same thing could be said for like the Middle East. Like if you look at Syria and the things that are going on with Israel and Gaza and the the West Bank and everything that's going on over there knowing history and all about that stuff will kind of teach you a little bit about why the dynamic is the way that it is. Same thing with I- the relationship between Iran and Iraq. Yeah. That's also a very, I mean, like a lot of people don't realize that Iran and Iraq had a civil war. Yes. Or not, I don't know if it's a civil war, but they had a war between each other yeah. at one point. And it was like crazy, like insane, crazy war. And then everything else too across the planet. There's just so many historical events that happened especially in regards to like military history and yep. war and, and combat where it shaped the way that the the map looks yep. even today because of things that happened or treaties that were drafted or battles that were fought and things like that. So I find that kind of stuff interesting, although I don't have as much time to invest in into it as yeah. I would like. Um, but so anyway, so you, you majored in political science and, and history and Russian. You said how long, how many years of Russian did you take there? Three. Three years? Yeah, and I actually... Between going to officer candidate school, moved to Kyrgyzstan, lived in Bishkek. I was 19 with the host family. My parents almost like killed me. Oh my God. Um, to learn Russian. So I wanted to be close to the Middle East, but not in the Middle East. Yeah. I wanted to be a part of a country that was por- former USSR and yeah. see what did that look like now? How have they found their own identity and be in a country that was Muslim? So yeah. it was like, it, to me, that history piece, all right? I'm like, they're Muslim, but they're all like have rushed they speak russian yeah and they're all like former like right and recognize themselves as an asian country so it's such a yeah. weird mixed di- digress group of people and yeah. so i wanted to go there and i mean most people never heard of the country anyway so look it up yeah um, curious <laughs> saying, no, I've, I've heard of it yeah it's it very this is um, very diverse and extremely. unique in like unique situation over there mm-hmm. for sure it is it yeah. is yeah and how long were you there for you said i was there for three months the whole summer Three months. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what did you do while you were there? You just like learned the language, got immersed in the culture. I kind of? was an English teacher. So I, yeah, really? we want to like complain a little bit about wages in the United States. I was probably making, I think it was like 28 cents an hour. <laughs> oh, it was like, dang. it was terrible. <laughs> I was, it was terrible. But it was like, you were also a student full time too. So you're, well, you know. I, no, I wasn't, I wasn't in school. Actually, I was just living with a host family. Oh, okay. So the host, like I lived with the host family, so I wasn't paying for that necessarily. Um, but I, my job was to go and teach English. Well, what they didn't tell me is like the different kind of levels of English students I would have at the time. Okay. So it forced me to learn Russian a lot quicker because I was dealing with kids and I was dealing with adults, right? And yeah. a lot of times in that country, they're like, I have to have English to get, like to be out of poverty. Like yeah. I need to have jobs that I have, can speak English because no one speaks Kyrgy or like there's a lot of people that speak like the Russian dialect, like English is so hard to come by so yeah. they were giving like all their money and then these parents were sending their kids to learn so i thought i would only really be speaking english like right you're immersed in it yeah and then i quickly realized they don't understand what i'm saying oh no so as a teacher i'm not certified by the way to like teach like, yeah oh, there's nothing about me like i'm like yeah i can teach you stuff um, yeah they gave me like a brief outline of like kind of what the kids were going through and it was kind of like hey lieutenant figure it out you yeah know? and i was like Okay. So oh, you were already you were already a lieutenant at the time. I wasn't, but I was like on my way to be. Like I was at officer candidate school, so I knew that that was something that I wanted to do. But. When you were in officer candidate school, you knew you wanted to do that. Yes. Okay. What? So, 
that's another thing I have a question about. So you were did you weren't in the naval ROTC program there or anything? Mm-hmm. You just did what the the O you went through an OSO? Yes. So because I played softball and I got a softball scholarship, they were like, You're not doing ROTC. And it didn't really okay. benefit me to do it anyways. And yeah. it, I never thought going into college that was something that I was going to do. Yeah. Um, I met a Marine recruiter out of the Fairfax, Virginia. Okay. And yeah, I was I was really young at the time. I was 18. And so I went through PLC. Okay. And I did the two six week courses. Oh, but gotcha. because I was so young, I had to take a summer off because they wouldn't let that much time between finishing school and commissioning. Yeah. So went to officer candidate school 2016, 2017, went to Kyrgyzstan because they told me to learn Russian. Oh, okay. Kind of like jokingly because I was like, well, how can I make myself better this summer? They're like, learn Russian or Chinese. And I was like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, so th- you you did. Were, did you go through? So for for those of you that don't know, officer candidate school or OCS is basically boot camp for officers for the Marine Corps. They all go to Quantico, Virginia, to Brownfield, um, near main ba- main side Quantico, and you go through. Usually, it's it's a ten week course. A lot of the times for people that go through an OSO, which is a officer selection office. I believe it's refer. Mm-hmm. I believe that's what it is. Um, but then a lot of people can do like the PLC program, which is ref- which stands for platoon leaders course. Yep. And you usually do like a juniors, which is your first six week. And then you do a seniors, which is your last six weeks. So it like breaks OCS up into two six week courses. So you end up spending two more weeks at Brownfield than everybody that did the 10 week course. But you don't have to do all 10 at the same time. Um, so when did you go to juniors then? 2016. 2016, you went mm-hmm. to juniors, and then when did you go to seniors? 2018. 2018. Okay, so 2018 was when you officially commissioned then. No, because I was still in school, because I didn't graduate until oh, 2019. Okay. Oh, so when you graduated, you had already the, completed yep. juniors and seniors, mm-hmm. so you just were able to commission right yep. out of college. Yep, literally graduate, and the next day, commissioning ceremony. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Where did you choose to do your commissioning ceremony? Iwo Jima, NDC. At the Iwo Jima Memorial? Mm-hmm. I did the same place. Hey, look at that! Yeah, <laughs> literally, I picked the same place. That's awesome. Yeah, because yeah, I like, I was like, I um, a fr- a good friend of mine who was one of my company commanders in 2016 when I was in Second Battalion, Third Marines. He was a major at the time. He retired recently. He actually retired this past October, um, but he was. I believe the OPSO for 8th and I at the time. Mm-hmm. So he was in DC anyway. Yeah. Um, and he was able to find some time in his schedule to come out and, and administer the oath for me and be my commissioning officer right at the Iwo Jima Memorial, yeah. which was super cool. My wife was my first salute, which was oh, kind of, yeah. that's kind of cool, you know, because yeah. it's like, you only get one first salute. Yeah. Who did you pick for your first, first salute? It was my grandfather. Your grandfather? Yeah. That's cool. It, it was really cool. And it's like still emotional to this day. Like he, yeah. he has since passed. But okay. that was like one of his favorite like last memories. Like he was so, so, so proud. Yeah, I imagine um, he was. Yeah. And so great being in D.C. in college, I was like, oh, that's where I'm doing it. And yes. I don't know if you had the same experience. More random people that were like tourists, like yeah. have pictures of me, then I don't know what to do. Because they're like, oh, what's going they're on like, what's here? Happening? There's people like, in nice uniforms. <laughs> yeah. really what's happening? Picture, picture. People yeah. like, taking selfies, and my parents got frustrated. They're like, we need to take photos with her. Like, <laughs> y'all, funny. like, get out of the frame. But yeah, my grandfather, so I like to say, I didn't really have any family that was military. Okay. My grandfather was a football player. He played football at Wake Forest. Okay. And just like almost everyone's grandfather at some point was a part of the military. Sure. He was in less than a year. Okay. So he literally went in and got out. Like it wasn't even, he didn't really do much outside of like boot camp. So he never really claimed that. So he never really talked about the Marine Corps. That wasn't a thing. But okay. obviously when he found out that I was going through, he quickly was like, well, did you know this? And I was like, how did I not know this my whole life? So yeah. he was like a very easy choice. And then within a year he he passed. So that was one of my favorite memories that I was able to share with him. When, um, what, so did he go through Marine recruit training? Yeah, he went. He went to boot camp. Where? Did, which side of this country did you get? Paris Island. Paris Island. Yeah. Okay, I went to Paris Island too. Yeah. Yeah, I went. I was in Paris Island from May of 2014 until August of 2014. So the hottest time of the year. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a brutal experience, but um, that's cool. That's cool that he was able to do that for you. I know that was probably extremely extremely meaningful for mm-hmm. him, and I know obviously for you too. You were pretty close with your grandfather then? Yeah, we were super close. And then that's what's crazy. You know, after people die, like you realize stuff that he went to Paris Island in 1968. And wow. I have his, during the Vietnam War. Yeah, I have his boot camp, um, I guess like a like almost like a yearbook. 
Yeah. I don't know what to call it, but I have it in my office. So that's cool. Um, I have it and Marines will come through and I'll like show them. And it's so cool to look at like how they used to train back then and, yeah. and everything and just that military history. So yeah. he never talked about it because he was like, well, I don't really feel right to like claim it because yeah. he knew like what it meant. But yeah, yeah. since I've been able to find out some things, which is cool. That's cool. Yeah. No, history, like again, history is important. Like my grandfather was in the Navy. He was an ensign in the Navy during World War II because obviously I'm old as <laughs> crap. You know, that's that's the one big deal. Uh, Riley is is very young and and uh, full of energy, and I'm old and decrepit at this point. So, my <laughs> grandfather was in World War II. So he he was an ensign in the Navy during World War II, and he was on the USS Mobile in the Pacific. Mm-hmm. And he was also he actually visited Hiroshima and Nagasaki right post dropping the bomb. So he was like he went out there and was like there, and I saw pictures of him in Nagasaki and Hiroshima from World War II, which is like really crazy to see like photos of that kind of stuff his brother fought his brother was in the army and was uh, a medic in on normandy for the like the normandy invasion so his brother was like bananas of course yeah. um and then my grandfather actually married a master sergeant in the marine corps let's go she was yeah so my let's grandmother go. was a master sergeant in the marine corps she was actually a, a, a woman's tennis champion at cherry point and she, I believe but when she retired, she was like running the commissary at Cherry Point during, during that period of time. She ended up retiring and um, they got married and moved back up to Maine because she was from Massachusetts because she was from Boston. She's a Boston woman. And he was from um, Philadelphia was where he was born. So they were both from up there and they ended up moving up to Maine. Uh, and lived up in that's where I'm originally from is Maine but oh. most people don't know that they think I'm just fun like fact. from down yeah fun fact yeah <laughs> fun fact but um so okay so you did your commissioning ceremony super emotional mm-hmm. super awesome experience mm-hmm. sounds like um and then after you commissioned where where did life take you after that mm-hmm. so I was slated to go to the basic school in September okay. so I of had, the same year mm-hmm. okay yeah, so I had between May and September and decided to go back to home to Indiana. Okay. And my sister was going to Purdue or knew that that's where she was, or she was actually already at Purdue. Okay. And so there was um, an OSO out of there. I just did some PTAD work with recruiting. That's where I was first really introduced to like the recruiting side of the house. Okay. Um, and it was pretty, it was pretty fun. Yeah. To, like be like, I'm a second lieutenant now, but I haven't done anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I get, uh, I get it. I, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I don't really have any experience yet, but I still Zero. like am super hyped to be here. Like, right. And I could at least speak to officer cannon school. So at least like I knew something. So when I was talking to people that was trying to get them involved in that process to become a Marine and be yeah. a Marine officer, um, I was able to do that. So I spent a couple months there and then I went to Quantico, Virginia to the basic school motivating yeah um how was yeah. how was plc for you by the way i was mm-hmm. kind of curious like how did you fare how did you feel like ocs was as a whole <laughs> yeah let's go let's go to that yeah, kind of curious talk about what that. was your experience there so i'm just gonna like paint a picture for you here the, i'm gonna take the first time i went so it's it's 2016 okay i'm just turned 19 and i finished playing my first year of college softball okay we had just finished the atlantic 10 tournament and two days later i had to show up to officer cannon school oh man okay so what i need you to understand is through this like there's no military members of my family right i wasn't really able to work with the oso very much because i was in season so in softball season we have like 60 games okay like yeah. Games so yeah it's like <laughs> it's like forget about it right yeah and so i wasn't able to do the ocs prep like any of that kind of oh, stuff man. And so i kid you not you'll laugh and anyone that's marine will laugh at this oh man i showed up with my hair down like i literally just was like I'm here. I'm here, guys. I'm, like, I'm here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and no. oh, immediately no. just like, whoo. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> you know, and it is tore yeah. you up. Oh, my God. And I've been an athlete my whole life. So being yelled at, like, it doesn't it doesn't phase me. Like, I understand. But You're, I like, good like, at that, yeah. I'm like, what? What is happening? What is Am I in it? trouble? What did I do wrong? <laughs> well, and then, again, like, I'm looking at rank structure, right? So all these people that were, like, preparing, I was one of the youngest because most people go after their sophomore year. So if people do the PLC, they do sophomore, junior year. Okay. Generally. Yeah. Um, and so I was one of the youngest ones. I'm like, I don't know anything. Like a lot of these people have like military parents or something. And yeah. I couldn't tell you the difference between a colonel and a lance corporal. Swear. I'm like, one looks older, one's shiny, one's not. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, you know, man. I did I tried to do my research, but um I will say like the first two days was just like complete like shock. Like just trying to figure out what in the world was going on. What did I'm I like, get myself? I'm into? literally laying in my rack being like, What do you mean I didn't fold my Hold my rack right like my bed's wrong like why it's it's clean it looks nice <laughs> do it again i'm like flipping it apart I'm like i don't understand 
Um, oh my but God. it was the most rewarding experience for me because I already thought, and again, I'm sure 18, 19 year old self, like I thought I was pretty squared away. Like I was a division sure. one softball athlete was, was playing as a freshman 4.0 GPA, yeah. had a job. Like I thought that like I was already going places and like was yeah. really good leadership wise and, and stuff like that. And it just opened my eyes to like such a transformation that I quickly realized like how to not be so selfish mm. and how to actually be a selfless leader. And then I never touched a weapon. Oh, you never touched a firearm no. at that point? No. no. Okay. So that was another thing too, right? They give this rifle and you're just like, what do I do with this? Like, Oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. now like, and you know, and this is like talks to the process of, of being a Marine right now. I'm expert rifle and pistol. I love shooting. It's one of my favorite things to do, but it's so awesome how we take young men and women from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, experience level to maybe they know a lot and you can mold them into this like Marine. And so sure. where I ended um, and peer reviews and everything was like, was like more at the top when I started and I was like, I am, I am lost. <laughs> and yeah. so it was amazing too. I, one quick story. I came home and like I said, my dad has been my coach my whole life. My dad's one of my best friends. We have an amazing relationship. This is after uh, your juniors. Yes. Okay. And I was like, dad, like he took me to the range and I was like, dad, I got to show you, like, I got to show you something. So I took a part the gun and put it back together and when I took it apart he was like <laughs> you broke it you broke it like he's like spazzing out like thinking that like I broke he's like oh, I have to pay for it now I was like no 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 and I like put it back together and it was like th like to see that in his eyes was just like what happened like yeah. you were there like what how did they train you and teach you and he's like the most like proud father and I'm just gonna brag on him for five seconds <laughs> while I was at OCS he would watch some of the training or like they would post sometimes like what we were doing on like the Facebook group sure or something. yeah yeah and my dad when I ran a PFT he ran a PFT and he would be training every single day being like if if he calls me right he's like if Rye's doing this and like I'm doing it like that's like the kind of man like my father that's is cool so to this day he will still test himself he's 54 Three. He still tests himself in his three mile run. He's so young. right now, yeah, as it's PFT season, he's like, "All right, buddy, here's my three mile. Here's where I'm at." And I'm like, motivate. <laughs> but it never was a marine, so that's like that. That tells you there was a massive transformation. But I had my family support when initially they were kind of worried about it. Yeah, my mom. Um, oh, of just, course, yeah. Uh, that's what moms do. Yeah, they worry about their kids. Mm -hmm. That well, your dad was a, your dad was a competitive athlete too. Mm -hmm. So like, I could see why. You know, being a guy from that kind of a background would be motivated to t physically test himself, oh, especially yeah. if his daughter is going see through yeah. something, you know. So that's cool. That's cool that he's well, not only that he's interested in, in health and wellness, but that he's like been such a huge like supporter of you mm -hmm. this entire time. Like that's that that helps a lot. Having a good support structure, yeah. especially when you're going through that kind of stuff is is super helpful because not everybody gets that opportunity. A lot of people come from broken homes into the Marine Corps. So it's like, you know, it's nice to see that, you know, some people have some good support structures out there when they're getting, getting into those like tough life experience situations, yeah. you know? Um, I graduated OCS in 2018 as well. So, okay. but I, yeah, but I just, it took me, obviously I had to finish my degree first though, yeah. cause I was in a, the Edo program, but, um, so we were there at the same point. Roughly. Yeah. I was in there. I went there in August of 2018. So it's probably okay. a little bit I after like you just did. finished. Yeah. You'd probably just finished. And then I got there and was just like, I was a sergeant and I was just like, Oh my God, I'm going through boot camp again. <laughs> Can you, Oh my God. Yep. And yeah, but it was an interesting experience. But, um, so you, you, you commissioned, you went to the basic school. What month did you go there? September to September April. to April. Okay, so you were there for the entire winter, like myself as well. Um, yeah. How was TBS for you? I know that was a probably arduous experience, as it is for most lieutenants. Honestly, I kind of enjoyed it. Did you? I did. Um, I love like going full Marine mode, like in my okay. life. Like right, there's I very rarely can go 100 percent all into something. Yeah, yeah. So at that time softball had ended and like my sole focus was being like the best marine possible and that's like all i cared about and so for me that was so rewarding that that's what i poured like my heart and my soul into um i was of course with i was in fourth platoon and we were like i was like the fun and games officer so every month we had like outings and 
um, morale was high. Yeah. Morale was really high. You know, I was one of obviously very few women, right? But felt very much respected okay. by my peers. And I felt like we freaking got after it. So every time I was there and I was struggling, like I had a lot of like men and women that I could really like lean, lean on. And the experience was overall like extremely positive until the end. Um, until the end <laughs> yeah because covid hit so oh yeah okay yeah m- march of 2020 march april that's at the end of my tbs experience when you worked so hard and now it's starting to get into like the rewarding part of it yeah that's that you have family day so for me and my family i wanted so badly especially my dad but my mom to come out and just like see everything yeah and they they weren't afforded that opportunity or even like graduation we were awkwardly like spaced out six feet away and it was like okay you did it and you're like yeah wow um and then with the mos selection yeah i finished um i believe like top 30 top 40 like i was like up there and overall class of 270 lieutenants and i got my eighth choice and I know anyone listening, you're like, yeah, me too. <laughs> wait, like, wait, right? wait, like, explain. I'm like triggering people, right? They're like, me too. Or everyone's yeah. like, oh, well, on average, you get your top three choices, which happened to like everyone but me. Um, and so I'm I'm a really, really strong Christian. And I believe that everything like happens like for a reason. And at the time, I thought my life was like ending, but I didn't realize what God was setting me up for, yeah. like further to come. And so a big part of it is I studied Russian. I really wanted to be Intel. I don't know anyone who doesn't really want to be Intel or doesn't like think it's cool, right? Like you're like, I don't want to be an intelligence officer. I'll tell you a funny story after you finish yeah. this piece. Um, and then after that, I really wanted to get into public affairs. Like shocker. Me like too. Like <laughs> shocker. I know. I know. Like controlling the media and like doing this stuff and like highlighting the power of story, I think is so important. Agreed. And so that was a big thing for me. And then I liked like the little niche MLSs, which again was like where my eighth choice came to be. Yeah. But like I like like air support control, like little stuff like that. I'm like, oh, like these like niche little things in the Marine Corps that make a massive difference that I can like 100% go in and specialize. Yeah. Well, God and the Marine Corps had other plans for me. They're like, you're going to be a logistics officer. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what? Like, really? Like, you sure? <laughs> you sure? Um, and I mean, and it was funny too, because they were trying to push like uh, ground intel and like even like infantry, right? Because at the time they were really trying to like push like women to go and they knew I was a collegiate athlete. And I was yeah. like, I, I'm not interested. Like, good. trust me, like, I'm trust good, me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would love the challenge. I just, I just don't have a passion for it. I get um, it. So anyways, eighth choice logistics. And so I'm, and when I was explaining this, you know, I went up to my SBC and I was like, explain yourself essentially respectfully. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, make this make sense. What happened? What happened? Like, to me? why didn't you fight for me? Like, again, like peer evals and stuff. Like I was at the top of the platoon Yeah. and another girl, you know, comparison game, right? Another female got Intel and like, everyone's like, yo, like what is happening? And so he was like, well, you, you know, sandwich compliment you're so good at leading people and all this like stuff like we want you to go and be like an actual platoon commander like you wanted all these small mos's like go out lead a lead a platoon all this stuff and so i could sit with that yeah and then because i did well i got my number one choice in location which was camp pendleton so i was like okay it's getting better it's getting better until i saw my job and my job i was a second lieutenant filling an 03 billet as the s4 officer for MAUS 39, which MAUS 39 okay. Marine Aviation Logistics Squadron um, has roughly TO'd 750 Marines. Okay. Awesome. But I was VS4, not Alpha, not anything, replacing a captain that had been in 10 years in the Marine Corps. Okay. And I'm like, okay, so you say you want me to lead a platoon, and now I'm about to be in the S4 shop with like three Marines. Yeah. Okay, make that make sense. Yeah. But, so at the time, I was kind of distraught. Like, I was like, really? I did all of this for nothing. But again, and we'll get into it because I want to hear your story. But yeah. God was, like, setting that up. And so looking back, like, thank you for letting, like, that decision happen. But at the time, I thought, you know. My life is ending. ending. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> oh, my God. I did all this. The Marine Corps oh hates God. me. <laughs> all right. So similarly to you, I was, I think, 37 or 38. I was ranked We're number like 37 or 38. Yeah, out of out of like 227 mm-hmm. people, I was like in the I was in the middle of the top third. Yep. Which means that you were probably somewhere around the middle yep. of the top third too, because you performed well, I performed well, and I got my eighth choice as well. Stop it. Exactly eighth choice, straight up. Weird, right? This weird. Is weird. I know it's weird. <laughs> um, and I too had so I put my first choice was Comstrat, obviously, because I wanted to be in communication strategy because I love PAO stuff. I love public affairs. I like talking to people. I like 
getting out there in front of cameras and, and doing things. I like bringing attention to things. I like raising awareness about subjects I find important or interesting or, or entertaining or things like that. And that was my number one, right? My number two is logistics. So I tried to get logistics. I was, and there was like 24 allocations yeah, for prior lot. enlisted guys to go to logistics. And then my next like four were all the intels right after mm. that. And then I think, I can't. I think my seventh was combat engineer, and then my eighth was supply officer. So then they ended up picking me for supply officer, and I was <laughs> like, I was like, why did I put that as my number eight? Why shouldn't I? I should have pushed that further down. So at the time, I was like, you know, oh man, I'm kind of bummed because I also like I wanted to. I like, I like being involved with people, and I like being able to be in like a position of leadership where I can impact a lot of people mm -hmm. because I have a strong passion of taking care of people, especially Marines, like. Because I've seen what it's like to have unbelievably good leadership. I've also seen what it's like to have unbelievably bad leadership. And it, and it, you know, there's varied opinions on like what constitutes good and bad leadership and all that stuff. And that's like a whole nother conversation. But really, I just wanted to be able to have a positive impact on as many people as possible and be able to take care of my people. Yeah. You know, because like I care about people. This is a people business. It's like, you know, you're only as good as your team. Um, and like, if you're able to be that strong, you know, that strong central figure for your team, you, and you can do whatever you can to like, make sure that they're successful with what they've got going on. You're able to help take care of them and make sure their needs are met, make sure that they're able to be successful. You know, that kind of stuff is important to me. And since, and since that happened, like I've had tons of opportunities to, to lead Marines, to do all kinds of stuff, impact people in a positive manner. And like, I ended up. I've ended up since then being able to have a positive impact on a lot of people. And I mean, obviously there's always work to be done. I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. Like I could definitely be better at a lot of things, but I do try to make most of my decision based on like, Hey, how is this going to impact the, the people that are in my, my company or whatever and, or my shop or my section or whatever that is. And like, I want to make sure I'm doing right by them because yeah. that's who this is about. Like I don't work, I, they don't work for me. I work for them. That's how, that's how I look at it. And, you know, so it ended up working out and there's still other opportunities outside of there that aren't like, you're not necessarily only going to be doing your job as a right. marine officer. You're going to be doing tons of stuff, which a lot of people don't realize that just, just cause you get, you get a job you may not necessarily be super thrilled about at the time. Like, especially as an officer, like you're going to have opportunities to lead Marines and do things that benefit Marines in a very wide, broad range of, of subjects and things rather than just like, Hey, you're just that MOS. Like, especially when you get all these ancillary billets that you get, you get like varied command positions you could get that you're not necessarily doing your MOS, right? you know? And, and there's, there's just a lot of opportunity to, to like really have a positive impact on people. And I think at the end of the day, just being resourceful enough to look for ways that you can do that is the real key to success. So, um, I'm glad to see that you've kind of turned oh, yeah. your opinion on it like a little bit and you kind of see it for like, hey, this is actually something I'll be able to, you know, turn into a positive thing. Yeah. And I did. And like you said, like being a Marine officer is the best job I ever could have asked for. Like that was the job that we worked hard for. And like, yeah. a Marine officer is a Marine officer. And no yeah. matter what MOS you had, like I would have told that back to myself, like post graduation at the basic school, like you are a leader of Marines. Yeah. Period. Yep. And statement. Right. And even then, like, all Marine officers do very similar things. So amongst yeah. all MOSs, like some of the things we do day in and day out are all so similar. They're just a little bit of like a variation in like mm -hmm. the actual job that is at, at hand. And they're all cool parts about it. And again, like you're talking about, there's so many what's called 806 billets for officers where it doesn't matter your MOS. Yep. Like this is what you're doing. You're leading Marines. Yeah. So again, your younger self sometimes is like so caught up and fixated in that one moment. And it's like, hey, take a step back, like devil dog, like you're leading Marines. Like yeah. this is what you wanted. And you're going to make the most out of any situation because you're going to impact people. And it's about them. It's never about you. Yeah, exactly. And I like you're saying, like once you're a captain, like you can do so many different command yeah. billets. Like you may not even be doing your MOS. No. I, I still <laughs> haven't done my MOS once since I since I graduated. Like I've done like other billets in various locations. I mean, I did some stuff in the Middle East for, for six months with a whole bunch of different people across the, the NATO forces and mm -hmm. the U S forces. Like, and then I've been back and I've been in a, some unique positions since I've been back as well. So it's like, you know, you can really, it's really, 
the experience is what you make of it. And like, yeah. at the end of the day, like for me, the most rewarding thing for me is that I get to work with Marines. Like yeah. that's the coolest thing. Like I missed it when I was gone because I didn't work with a lot of Marines when I was in the Middle East. I was working with mostly like Army and Navy and Air Force, which don't get me wrong, they're co good people, but it's like, it's nice to be back oh, yeah. working with Marines and doing stuff with Marines and stuff. So that's, that's definitely cool for me. But anyway, so you got picked for that. You went, you, you went to Pendleton. Uh, yeah, so, right? yep, I went to Pendleton, went to logistics school, was in Camp Lejeune, so that's what the only time Johnson, I was here. Johnson, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you were in Johnson. Yeah, hey, it's great. It's what you make of it. Yeah, come it is. It come is. on perspective. Yeah. How long were you there for? Three months. Three months, okay. Yeah, and then, literally. <laughs> three months. And then, and then I survived. Yeah, you survived. And then after those three months, then you went to Pendleton. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you, how long were you in Pendleton for then? So I was stationed there for three years, but I did not spend all three years there, obviously. No. How long <laughs> yeah. were you there for? Gosh, I probably spent, I would say probably half of that time I was actually in Pendleton. So about a year and a half? Yeah. Probably. And how was that that year and a half there? What did you do while you were there? Oh, I loved it. I, I actually loved Pendleton. And so being born there, I still had a lot of family there. So okay. that was like what was really awesome at the time. Like my grandparents um, were, were living there and I have family and everything. But I loved going to the beach. <laughs> Not <laughs> for the reason why people think. Not as a competitor. Okay. I wanted to play beach volleyball all the time. Okay. I would go and like scout out to play beach volleyball, spike volleyball, because I can't just sit at the beach. Okay. I like have to keep moving. You like doing stuff. Yes. So okay. I'll do like beach rucks, like beach runs. Okay. Um, sand beach sand volleyball, spike ball, like name a competition, like cornhole, and I am there. Okay. Like, yeah. But I'm doing it in sunshine and like water. I'll like, go like s somewhere around the ocean. And That's stuff beautiful like that. out there too. Yeah. So I just like being active. I like being competitive. I like being outside. So I also got really involved with golf. Uh, I'm like, okay. there were so many opportunities to go play golf. So I couldn't think of anything better on my weekends than go and like compete outside all day. Yeah. It's like, that's all I wanted. So you like golf? I like sports. I like, okay. to compete. I do <laughs> I like, like golf. sports. <laughs> I love golf. I'll go play right now. I'll go, I get more frustrated than I think any other sport. Dude, <laughs> golf is like one of the, so you know, who, you know, who Lewis Black is, he's a comedian. No. Okay. He's an older guy. He's been, he's a. He's been around for a long time. One of the things he said famously a long time ago is that golf is a sport for people that don't hate themselves enough already. <laughs> and I always thought that was the funniest line. Yeah. Because it's like, dude, it is like you're like, you're like, oh my God, I can't get this ball in the hole. I'm yeah. trying to just get it, this little ball yeah. in this hole, like however many yards down range or whatever. Like, yeah. But I've never, I've never been a big golfer. I, I did driving. Like drive ranges are, are fun yeah. because so like you're just whacking a ball as hard as you can. And I've got terrible form, and I can't do it very well at so all. Just hitting hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're probably much better at even driving, I'm sure. But uh, I yeah. get, I get the competitive piece, and I, I also understand like being outside. Like I enjoy being outside too. That's that's one of the reasons why I joined the infantry at first because we would go out, we'd do a lot of stuff outside, yeah. right? Um, but and sun, sunshine's good for you. In in you know certain doses and if you're using if sunscreen, you're sunscreen. <laughs> if you use sunscreen don't do like don't do like what i did not too long ago and got completely torched in texas but um so you were there for a year and a half you enjoyed your time there and then what happened to like cut your time so short there mm -hmm. to bring you to where did you go after that yeah well that's where that's where god really got involved right so okay i'm there um and it's covid and California, I know everyone was like really locked down, but California was a little was a little crazy. Yeah, it was so, a little, it was a little, little weird. A little much, a little much. Yeah, yeah. And so at the time, again, like painting the picture. So I'm like, dang, I just got logistics, but I'm going to this big job. And my goal shifted from like, okay, be the best like lieutenant you possibly can, right? Where it all should I get to this mysterious fleet, like I get experience what this is about. Yeah. And I sit down with um my boss. So I'm reporting directly to the XO, who's a major. Okay. And then the boss is a lieutenant colonel. And like I report directly to him for a lot of matters as the S four, and so yeah. I'm sitting in his office, and he's an incredible dude, Lieutenant Colonel Reese. Like he, this officer was one of the best leaders I've I've ever been a part of, like to this day. And I was so blessed that that was one of the first examples of leadership that I got to see. Yeah. Um. And he was like straight up with me. He's like, Hey, listen, Riley, like you're one of one, and um, you're not going to be deploying. So all of your peers out of here, lieutenants, are going to be going out on MUs and UDPs, and um you're not. So I just, I want you to know that. I want you to know like your role is very important, but you're in an upper staff role. And I know you're a lieutenant and I know you're the youngest sitting at our staff table by like 10 years. Like my kids are your age, but like, I just need you to get that in like your, your frame of reference, like around that for expectations. Yeah. And I went home and I was like distraught. 
I was like, I would have been distraught too, man. Right. And then, so I'm seeing all these opportunities go out to people or even like going to exercises. Right. And like getting out and I'm like, sweet, I'm in Pendleton. And I'm like, I woke up and I was like, what am I, what are my goals? What am I training for? And I lost that motivation. And I, I think a lot of Marines can resonate with that. Right. You work so hard to get through boot camp, officer can't school. You go to your trade school, MOS school. Right. And to be proficient, you get to the fleet and then what? Yeah. It's like I didn't join the Marine Corps to just sit on camp to be a practice player. Sit on, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. That's how I, I saw didn't it. join the team to sit on the bench. Right. And that. And as an athlete, that's how I saw it. Yeah. And so I'm. I'm looking at myself, and I'm like, okay, I'm like 22, 23 years old. I just got to California. I'm. I'm more fit than I've ever been. I'm more mentally sharp than I've ever been. And you're telling me my sports career is over. And you're telling me I'm not going to deploy and do something that I worked for. And so I said, okay. I'm going to get myself involved in some Marine programs because there are so many out there. Yes. And I said, okay, I'm going to join the Marine Corps softball team. I said, makes sense. You get to travel, you get to compete, a little bit of rivalry amongst like the services. I played yeah. college ball. Like, it'll be great. It's slow pitch. No brainer. Like, sweet, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, it's COVID. The season's canceled. And I'm like, oh, no. oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, so, no. yeah, I'm like racking my brain on like, I need something. I'm yeah. Like, I need something. I'm going crazy. Yeah. Like, it, it's CFT season at this point. I'm like, I've already got 300 on that. Like, I need something to work for. Yeah. And that's where I saw that bobsled was having this tryout and where that, and going to go back a little bit, yeah, going yeah. to George Washington mattered because the only jersey retired for softball was a jersey worn by Alana Myers Taylor. Alana Myers Taylor played softball several years prior to me there, but she was now an Olympic bobsledder. Okay. She's one of the most decorated bobsled athletes ever. So 2018, um, right before I went to Officer Cant School to finish, was the 2018 Olympics in Pyeongchang. Okay. She had come back to GW because she won silver medal, and her team was there. Well, the softball team got to present her an award. I was captain. They allowed me to present her an award. And so I presented her this award, like assigned softball. Like, it was whatever. But, yeah, yeah. you know, it was something for us. Yeah, yeah. And we got this photo, and I hit one of my teammates next to me, and I'm like, man, like, in another life, like I would be a bobsledder, but I'm so committed to the Marine Corps. Um, but you know, it, it sounds cool. It sounds awesome. So naturally I started following it because of her, like I had this connection. And so when I got to it, you know, God's timing, I saw that bobsled instead of in-person tryouts was, it was doing it online. I'm right. like, this is perfect. So in my natural Riley fashion, I call my parents and I was like, Hey, I got a crazy idea. Hear me out. And where this why well, I say this conversation that happened when I wanted to join the Marine Corps, that happened when I wanted to go to Kyrgyzstan, that happened when I wanted to work for a congressman. Like this is like my parents are like, what now? They're like, yeah. what now, Riley? And I said, I'm gonna try out for the bobsled team. And they're my dad, goodness, can you just settle down? Like, can you focus on the Marine Corps? Like what? Like he's like Riley, like you've done everything to get here. Like slow down. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. And so in my mind, I was just like. It's something to train for, right? Like I have certain marks. It's very similar to NFL combine. So running, sprinting, lifting, jumping, and then like kind of like an overall like skill video. Yeah. And then because the Marine taught me discipline and, and to be bold, I picked up the phone and I called the coach. I was like, hey, coach so-and-so, um, you know, yep, my name's, you know, I'm Lieutenant Riley T. Jack. Um, I just want to let you know, like, I'm going to be submitting a video to you guys. I'm really interested in, in joining the team. I knew you know, Alana, I played softball at GW and I'm in the military. I don't know if it's possible. I don't really know if it can be done, but um, you should be on the lookout for my video. And that was like how the conversation went. And I looked back and I was like, yes, like go me. Like we're, we're doing that. That's good. See that, yeah. that type of mentality is what separates a lot of people from everyone else, mm -hmm. right? Like the stuff that people do where they're like, let me think outside of the box because mm -hmm. like, and, and I look at it like this and if anybody has, if anybody's like, well, that's kind of weird. Why would you do that? Well, the Marine Corps and I think that the military in general needs people who can think creatively. Yeah. They, we, we have enough people out there who are just like, I'll do everything I'm told. I'll be very good at doing what I'm told and I'll stay well with inside of my little box and I won't ever go outside of it and I won't ever try to do anything creative. And I find that that's very restrictive and it doesn't allow us for, it doesn't allow for us to come up with unique ideas for approaching problems. Yeah. And, and that right there just tells me uh, that, that right there, that even that little snippet will tell a person a lot about what another person is about, like a lot about that individual. Mm -hmm. 
because you know, not a lot of people have it in them to be like, I, you know, I don't care what I've got going on. I'm interested in pursuing this Mm -hmm. and I'm going to have that bias for action and I'm going to go after something that I feel called to do, Yeah, you know? And so like, that's, that's a very respectable, uh, I guess, personality trait because not a lot of us have that, unfortunately. And I would always, I would always encourage people to, to think creatively and to think outside the box and think of new ways of approaching situations and new ways to do things. And, and don't just because you're a service member doesn't mean you can't also have passions and also uh, have goals that are outside of the military. And that doesn't mean that if you go off and do these things, that doesn't make you a bad officer or a bad service member. Like that is totally kosher. And the Marine Corps is usually pretty good about working with Very people good. to do that stuff, which obviously they've been with you because you've yeah. been able to do all these awesome things, um, which I think is super cool. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and that's the thing, right? Like the Marine Corps taught me to be bold. Yeah. I'm a part of a winning organization. Like we are winners. We find a way to win. And yes. so they instilled that in me and that confidence in me that I was like, why not? Like, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. Yeah. Like, okay. It's either not going to work out or it is. A lot of people let fear like cripple them, right? Like, oh, what if, yeah, what if, what if they don't like me or what if I'm not able to do it? Be like, well, the answer is already no if you don't try. Yes. Like, that's how I The answer is always no if you don't try. Or even speak up about it. And what is it like? You you can't win if you don't play. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yes. That's that. And so, yeah. yeah, yeah, That's what I was trying to think of that one. I was like, wait, maybe she'll think of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's like, that's what my mindset with life is like, I was told, you know, there was no reason why I was going to get Division One softball scholarship being from Indiana, right? I was told that, like, I wouldn't be taken seriously as a Marine officer. I was told I shouldn't be a Marine officer based off of, like, how I look and my personality is. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, well, why can't I be a professional athlete? Like, why can't I be an Olympian? Like, make that make sense, right? Yeah. If someone's going to do it, like, might as well be me. So yeah. that's what I went for, and I submitted the video, and... I do sometimes, I no, I do always have these crazy ideas that I want to go for and I want to do and I want to execute because I'm also obsessed with competition, but obsessed with seeing like how high can I raise my ceiling? Like what is my body physically and emotionally capable of and how can I like test that limit? Yeah. And people are like, you're nuts. This is why I joined the Marine Corps. <laughs> there it is. There's that screw that's loose, right? You but want a challenge. I do always. I get it. Always. I'm right there with you. Always, I usually always. challenge myself the most, honestly, right. and I like set I set these high bars. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I bet I can do that. Yep. Let's let's work towards that. Exactly. And I'll put the work in. I don't care how hard I have to work. I don't care if I'm working seven days a week. I will find a way to get there. And I won't stop until I do. Yeah. And that's All how I am. It. And I'm like, fine. Less sleep. Fine. Less. You know what? Like, whatever. Good. Yeah. Jocko. Good. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's a homie. Yeah. But exactly. I was like, good. And so that's just like again how I feel like I was raised and I felt like God put that on my heart. And the next thing, you know, all these doors just started opening so easily to where it's a way that like, I can't explain. Like people are like, how did you never do a sport until you were the age of 22? And then now you finish top 20 in the world competing in world championships. Like yeah. again, make that make sense. And so a big part of that one is the Lord two, my leadership in the Marine Corps and three, my support system. So I'll fast forward through this like quickly, but I submitted the video they're like, hey, yep, we think you have what it takes. And because of your like grit and your age, we want you to jump right into the pilot seat. Like we want you to drive these bobsleds. Oh, um, here's your invitation to come out for one month to Park City, Utah at the uh, Olympic Park. And uh, you're going to try the sport. I was like, oh, I got to ask my boss. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, do I need to take leave for this? I sir? Said, How does this work? Oh, no, now, now, <laughs> now it's real. Yeah. And so I went into you know, Major Seymour's office. And I said, sir, um, can we have a conversation? He's like, yeah, what's going on, Riley? And mind you, it's still in the era of COVID. So if someone tests positive anything, having two weeks off wasn't not normal at the time. Yeah. Or like teleworking was very much like a thing okay, at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because if you came in contact even in California, like you have to at least five days isolation at home. Yeah, yeah. So I said, you know, sir, I have this crazy opportunity I, I, I submitted for this. I didn't think I was going to get it. I just got offered to go try out essentially for Team USA for a month in, in Utah. And they're paying for it. I just have to get myself there. And That's cool. it was a 10-hour drive. And I said, sir, I will work remote. I will do all this. And he was like, you know, let me talk to the boss about it. And again, that's where I talk about Lieutenant Colonel Reese. And Lieutenant Colonel Reese and Major C. Meyer sat down with me. And they're like, Riley, you have proven yourself as a lieutenant. You have gone, 
you know, be above and beyond. And that's why we're giving you this opportunity. So I would say in the Marine Corps, like if you want opportunity, like you have to show proficiency and that you are a good Marine. Yeah. And we want to reward good Marines, right? Yeah. And we should. Me, yeah. And me leaving was going to be at the detriment of his command, right? Yeah. Like the S4 officers leaving. Um, and he was like, we'll cover down for you. Like you need to go and, and, and try this, you know, like this is a once in a lifetime. Opportunity. That is so cool that they were supportive of you for that, man. Cause like, I, I know a lot of people look at this kind of thing, like, and it's unfortunate, but there's a lot of people in the community that they're like, Oh man, if these people got these, these awesome opportunities, they're not actually doing their job. So what are they actually doing in the Marine Corps you yeah. know, or in the military in general? And they would look at it, they would perceive it in a certain way, mm -hmm. but it's like, I like to look at it like, First off, you seizing that opportunity to do something outside the box is freaking awesome that you were able to go and like chase after some stuff that you set goals for. And the fact that your command was supportive of you in that speaks volumes about what kind of human beings they are too, because they were like, they're like, I want to see this Marine succeed. I want to see them win because that's what we should be doing. We should support all of our people mm -hmm. and be like, look, I want to see everyone in my family who is everyone in the Marine Corps. Right. That's my family. Right. I want to see everybody win. Right. And that like that is so freaking awesome to hear yeah. that they were supportive. And I can't speak, say that enough too for the example of leadership that it showed me. Yeah. And what I want to carry on to as many as many people as possible is like leaders like let your marines do things yes give believe in them give them chances it may you may have to cover down on their work and do these things but it is so worth it because when the marine wins everyone wins yes. we all eat if they eat we eat. and i look back exactly. on this and it's like if those two gentlemen never afforded me that opportunity i wouldn't be where i am now where i'm like impacting the lives of so many marines yeah and since lieutenant colonel reese has gotten out he did his over 20 years of a, like incredible service and he afforded me an opportunity that the Marine Corps has never seen and never has been done for yeah. ever. Has he talked? Have you talked to him since then? I have. I have. And that's cool. Yeah. He is, again, like I said, a very, very integral part of the story. More that like they don't even realize. And Major Seemeyer since has was stationed in England and coming back full round. Last year, I was competing in Germany and him and his whole family came from the UK over to Germany to watch me compete and his two little girls got to sit in my bobsled and they watched a full race and, and cheered me on that's in cool, Germany. Man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm super, I'm super glad that they, uh, that they were able to hook you up with that opportunity. Like, cause you know, oftentimes you find, you know, the, just the requirements of the Marine Corps oftentimes always trump personal endeavors a lot of times. 100%. And it's tough. It's tough for a leader to make that type of decision where it's at their detriment and their command's detriment to allow their, this Marine that they kind of depend on to go off and chase some dreams, you know, and, and like go off and do awesome things outside of their command. That's a tough decision to make. Mm -hmm. So that's cool that you guys have been able to like maintain a relationship mm -hmm. and that, that it w they were so supportive of everything. That's like, that's super cool, man. So, Anyway, they were like, okay, cool, green light. <laughs> and then you went to Utah. I show up in Utah, and I am with probably 20 to 30 other athletes from all over the country. Okay. All different majority track athletes. And we're just there, and we're in this group, and no one knows anybody. We're kind of looking around. Like, it's still COVID, right? So yeah. we had a quarantine for, like, three days. Yeah. And finally get outside, and they're like, all right, we're going to do what we call a track walk. So we go up to the top of the mountain. We had like ice creepers, ice trackers on, walk down the ice. and like, all right, you guys are, um, you know, going to be piloting tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. And here's what you're going to do when you get there. And you're like, and it's like sink or swim. <laughs> like it is like yeah. the most, like it's very similar to Marine Corps in that. Like so you better figure, figure it out. Figure it out. <laughs> and uh, if not, you're going to end up on your head. So, oh you know, you'll, you'll learn one way or another. Yeah. And oh, the, like the nervous, the, it's very similar to Marine Corps, right? I wasn't going to show like bearing, like how much inside, like I was kind of like, what am I doing? You're like but I also freaking out it, inside, but, but I loved it. Like yeah, I was yeah. like, yes, yeah. like I want to go first. And people were like, yeah, you go first. Like that's it. I want to go first. Yeah. Um, and so we went down. So we went down halfway down the track. So they weren't like completely pushing us off, but um, driving and I finished and I was like, you know, like the Wahoo girls. Like I was like, Wahoo. Sure, yeah, yeah. I was like, woo. I was like, yeah. <laughs> like I finished and I was like, let's go again. And they're yeah. like, all right, all right. And people, you know, other people's emotions were a little bit different. Like, I'm never doing that again. Yeah. The, um, majority of the group never makes it. Um, and that's fine. Like you're what you're asking for 
is to do something also crazy, right? Like if I came to you and I was like, Kagan, I have a really good deal for you. Okay, you're going to completely fund up to $60,000 a season. You're going to go 90 plus miles an hour, travel the world. But when you fail, you're going to end on your head, probably get a concussion, probably get third degree ice burn and maybe need a skin graft. But like oh, you get a peak for Team USA and like, you know, it's, it's fine. Yeah. And you're like, you might like shake your head and be like, mm. you're like, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is it? You know? Yeah. That's a tough decision to make. It is. And so for me, I was just like, I just want to keep going this and I just prayed on it and like doors kept opening the next thing you know I was able to compete my first international competition like that year and what then year was that 2021 January 2021? 2021 okay I was able to compete in the North American Cup at that track that I learned went to Lake Placid which is our other Olympic training center and was able to learn that track and I was like okay like I'm doing the thing yeah I'm doing this like this is cool and then you know the following year got to go to Europe Got to compete in Austria. Got to compete in Switzerland. In 2022. Like, mm-hmm. That's cool. And then yeah. by 20, yeah, th- by 2022, 23 season, because we're we're winter sports, so okay. October then, and in just less than three years, I was named to my first United States national team. That's cool. Only three pilots were named. Um, I was one of them, and I competed in the World Cup circuit, the highest of the highest circuit, with people that were just in the 2022 Olympic Games and competing side by side with them competed in world champions. They were just in the Olympic Games and yes. you were competing with them. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So you're in like months. with the big dogs. Oh, oh yeah. We were will they, MLB we will MLB status. Yeah. At this point. Were they extremely competitive like yourself then I imagine? Yes. And let me tell you, like I'm five seven. I think you know at the time I was one of the smallest ones. Really? I mean, there are women that are 185 pounds and are just freaking Bro. animals, <laughs> man. And it's awesome brick, to see. A, a brick, brick house. Yeah. A brick house. And I'm like whoa like the level of like again like that like strong woman to me i was like yo that's freaking insane and so the coolest thing for me was like the people that i've met on the way so i think at first people thought i was like playing a mental game with them yeah but i was just like really excited for everyone's success and i'm friends with people from like all the nations and was like hey i want your best versus my best if you beat me yeah i'm pissed about it but at the end of the day like i'm gonna come and be like dude you just elevated me like i'm coming at you tomorrow and so then the culture that was able to like come around was just yeah. like positive and they're like Riley you're always smiling you're always happy and I'm like because I'm doing something I have no business doing <laughs> right I'm representing the Marine Corps I'm representing Team USA I'm on the highest stage possible in a sport that I've never done and I'm impacting the lives of people because people look at me now like I'm this like superhero and I'm like I'm no better than especially, anyone else especially young women you know and and that's my goal and so since then you know, I've been able to continue to compete. I, I just got back from world championships not too long ago. Yeah. How, how did that go? Um, not great. Not great? <laughs> no. Was it, it was that competitive. It was that tough. The competition um, was that strong. I, I had, I had some crashes. Did you really? Yeah. How did you, did you get any concussions or anything? Um, so I had some crashes. You bonked your noggin? Did you I, bonk your noggin? Uh, it was, I got hit a couple times. Oh, but, uh, man. But you're good. You seem like you're in good I'm shape. I'm with it. Yeah. I can't tell. Yeah. No, I can't tell. I can't, yeah, I can't tell at all. Um, no, yeah, I, I, I've been challenging, but I've been able to do things since, right? Yeah. Now the Marine Marine Corps looks at me like, hey, you have a story to share with young one, men and women, and yeah. they allow me then to go out and do recruiting events for that's them, cool. right? Or I wrote a children's book that's going to be um, coming out here. You wrote a children's soon. book. What's it called? I did. It's If You Can Dream It, Be It. If You Can Dream It, Be It. Yeah. You know what I think? The One other thing that's like, so this is something I've learned from a lot of folks that are like very successful. Like the people you surround yourself with mm-hmm. are the people that you then you then take on character traits of and you you yeah. kind of become more like the people you surround yourself with the most. So if you're hanging out with a bunch of bums, like you're probably going to end up being kind of a bum, right? Yeah. But if you surround yourself with winners all the time or yeah. people that are getting after it or people that are like driven, that are tenacious, that are like I am going to find a way. Yep. You surround yourself with people like that. You become more like those people. You you take on character traits and personality traits of those people, which obviously yeah. you've been doing. Being around all these people that are like superstars in the in the in, in the athletic realm and yeah. and everybody else that you're you're around, you know. And that's kind of one of the things I like to do as well is like surround myself with with winners. Yeah. Because you're going to be more like the people you spend the most time around. So. And you should see my group of people that I have. I mean, you should see my group of women and what it looks like to empower other women, yeah. right? So I see like a boss getting after it. And instead of being like, Ugh, 
Like, why is she prettier than me? Like, why is she more successful yes, than me? Yes, we gotta be I, more supportive of well, each other. I look at her and I'm Have like, to. I'm like, yo, I'm like, you're a boss. Like, yeah. teach me. Like, what I do I need to do to you. get there? Or how can I like uplift you and give you a compliment? Me, like, dude, you're getting after it. Like, yeah. you're inspiring me right now. Like, thank you for that motivation. And yeah. you'll be, I mean, everyone here, you'll be so surprised how many women like need that because they don't have that. Yeah. So my group of girls, and then we expand that, right? Then you feel supported in your community. And then you can bring other people in. Yeah. And then it just grows, and then it multiplies. And we're creating this space and atmosphere. And I know I'm excluding the dudes here for a second. No, so women, we need it. You're, so, you're producing this, like, amazing group of women that are out there getting it, doing things that have never been done before. It doesn't mean I don't fail. It doesn't mean I, don't, I haven't had, like, moments of weakness. Sure. And then I rely on them to help lift me up that have gotten me through the hard times. So I call them my tribe. Like these are like my tribe of people yeah. that have my back no matter what, have gotten me through the hard times. I can be really real with of struggles, but also they're out there in their realm and me succeeding isn't hurting them succeed. They're like, we can all win. Yes. And that's, you know, that's a big thing I've noticed in, especially in like the social media circle mm -hmm. stuff. Like there's a lot of feast or famine mentality where people see somebody else winning and then they're they're like, oh man, like screw that person. Yeah. Like, and and those people are just, I mean, and everybody can see it. And I saw a, a podcast. I think Joe Rogan did a podcast with uh, Cameron Haynes a while back, and also um, I forget the the guy that founded the Meat Eater podcast. I can't remember his name right now for some reason off the top of my head. But in any case, they um, they were talking about guys that that tear each other down within their prospective communities and people can see that and they're just like yeah that's kind of like you know weak energy stuff and people don't yeah. want to be around that they want to be around people that are encouraging each other people that are supportive of each other because it at the end of the day like you said there's enough room at the table for everybody to eat and the more people that are winning especially in our communities the more we all win together yeah. and and we definitely got to be more supportive of each other in in that aspect cuz it's just it's a healthier it's a healthier way of doing business. Mm -hmm. It's good for everyone's mental health to have a yeah. good support system. And and honestly, like it, the more positive influences we can have out there, the better it is going to be for all of these young people that are coming up that may not know what to do with their lives. They may not know, like, they may not have like that good role model or that that mentorship that some of us were born fortunate enough to have. You know, and and that's you know that's one of the reasons why it's important to have people like you and people like you know the folks that you you associate with a lot that are out there setting this example for people that they can then therefore or then emulate you know like yeah. that's huge well and that's the thing it's not it's not for me right yeah. everything i'm doing isn't for riley to be successful like everything i'm doing is to give back and yeah. inspire and ultimately like have my communities win like i want the marine corps to have the best talent as we already do but to continuously to be Me the too. best war fighting organization in the world. Yeah. And to where you constantly hear the word Marines is like, yeah, good luck finding someone that's not the most squared away individual. Like that yeah. title means something. And I want more. I want the best. So I'm out there recruiting being like, hey, I want the best to join my team. If you're not the best, you can go to another service. Yeah. But I want the best to come up over here. And there's a reason why we're the best because we have people. We're going to uplift you and we're going to get you to hit a level of you that you didn't think was possible. Yeah. But I will say this, like, briefly, and it, like, breaks my heart. Like, similar to what you're saying, the people that are our hardest critics and, like, tear us down the most are people in our community. Yeah, and that is that is what I've seen, too, Jeez. man. I've seen it. It's not it's not healthy. There's, It's unfortunate. Like, the people that support veterans in active duty the most are typically active duty and veterans, right? They're going to be the most supportive because they, they're they all about it. They're, like, they want to see us win. But then there's yeah. also this, those, the same people – or the same community of people have folks that hate on their own community. I guess the, the easiest way I told somebody, nobody nobody loves vets in active duty more than vets in active duty, but nobody hates on vets in active duty more than vet, vets in active duty. Yeah. And we got to get better about that because, like, mental health is a real thing. Uh, you know, not, what's it called? Like, preventing people from taking their own life is a yeah. very important thing that we have we have like annual training about there's symposiums about there's entire nonprofit organizations that are centered around that like we got to do a better job of taking care of each other and the best way to do that is by being supportive of each other whether it's something that we 100% are, are in agreement with or if it's just like hey they're doing something that's a little outside the box you know that you know, we got to be just in general more supportive of each other so um I've seen it too. Yeah. I've definitely seen it too. And I, I try to make a point 
to never like when I see it, it makes me want to do that even less because yeah. I don't want to be a part of that. I want to be a positive influence. I want to be supportive of people that are getting after it and trying to better themselves and setting a good example and are working working their butts off to do something with their lives and and especially people that are just like positive human beings because mm. I need positive influences just like everyone yeah. else does and like I see people like you. And I'm like, man, that is awesome. Like that motivates me. That right. makes me want to get after it. I need to work harder. Right. I need to work harder. That person makes me want to work harder. Right. I'm inspired to work harder because I see what that person's doing. You know, and I, I see a lot of that stuff and like that, that is huge. That's huge. Not only for me, but for everybody else in, in the community, you know, so. Right. And that's the thing. Like we're on the same team. Yeah. Right? So we're that's on the same thinking. team. That's what I'm saying. Like, also, like I'll talk trash to the, the soldiers next to me, right. And the airmen, all that kind of stuff. Sure. But at the end of the day, like. We're on the same team. Like we all decided to raise our hand to be part of that one percent of people that will not stand up and serve and fight for your country. Yeah. So my thing is like, we're on the same team. Let's like let's love on each other. Let's support each other. We can all win. We yes. all are winners already. Yes. Yeah. By doing like <laughs> right like let me just preference that. <laughs> but like let's continue to lift each other up. Let's continue to be there for each other. Like compliments and and being kind to people is free like yeah dude it costs like nothing it costs nothing to be nice no. to somebody and so you know anyone knows what it feels like to get a compliment or let someone know you inspire them because i'm gonna fire that right back at you right? yeah like, you're out here doing things that inspires me wow you you know something more than i do like teach me and then okay now i gotta go get more squared away because yeah. I, th I saw like a kink in my armor and instead of being defensive about it it's like let me recognize it and let's like grow together so i can be a better person yeah which then betters my platoon which betters my company which betters the marine corps at yeah. the end of the day yeah and the community in general you know like because at the end of the day like we're all going to get out eventually you yeah. know and, and and what do you have left when you get out well you've got the people you've met you've got your your connections you've got folks that are in the veteran community folks that have served but that the folks that are there's always going to be people that are still serving. You can still support them when you get out even. But like you got to make sure that because the NAP, you're, you're only as good as your reputation a lot of times. And if you said your reputation is, hey, that person's a jerk. I don't really want to associate with them. Well, then that's just what people are going to know you for. But at, like on the other flip side of that coin, it's like that person is known for being like a go-getter, a positive influence, somebody that's just friendly, nice to be around, like cordial, uh, respectable, hardworking. I want to be more like that person. Like even regardless of what's going on, they're going to want to associate with you more. Yeah. So like just setting that good example is such a big deal, you know? Um, so in any case, so you did, you did 2022 and then 2023, this are this past one. Yeah. When was this past one? When did that take place? In February. Feb this past February, yeah. 2024. Yeah. And that was, that was a rough one, a rough go of it. Yeah. To be honest, like if you can look at my life and you're obviously asking me things because of the successes I had, what you don't see is, is the failures that I have. Right. You're not like, and today we got Captain Riley T. Jack. She's failed. However many times. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like that's, that's not, not they, motivating. Yeah. yeah. They don't announce um, you like that at the no, failure. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine with that. But, um, I also have to speak like failure is a real thing and I fail more times than I succeed. And the only reasons why I have succeeded is because I've failed so many times and I've kept going. And so full disclosure, um, you can watch it on YouTube. Um, but I went to world championships. There's four heats. Yeah. And it's a combined total. It's a very similar, um, uh, very similar schedule to the Olympics. So it technically is the Olympics of a non-Olympic year. It's just called World Championships, same qualification, same everything. So I get there. I'm really excited. Um, there's 25 sleds that star. And then the fourth heat, only the top 20 get to go. And the first, the first run, do well, crash at the end. So there's 14 Ooh. curves. And so it's called um, the victory roll. So we're kind of going. And at the very end, you just... You just crash and you slide up. Oh, um, it still really hurts and it's still not. Yeah. Hurt. So first one, victory roll, and I'm like, oh, dang, okay, but like it's okay. on your like, neck or something. On my head. Ooh. So my head and there's videos of it is just like hitting the short roll on ice and just pop, pop. Like it feels like you're just getting like, like punched numerous times. In the back of your head. In the front and the like everywhere. How's your neck? <laughs> That's yeah. It's like whip. I mean, it's a car accident that doesn't stop, right? Like you're going. 70 80 miles an hour just Oof. going and it's just like boom and you don't know where you are and you're trapped and like you're kind of just trying to stay in it and yeah like, you have to like push and slide out um anyway so run one victory roll yeah like, okay so there's two two eats a day two one day to the next day combined time yeah okay i'm gonna fix it study video okay i got this i got this i've done it in training it's gonna be good you know my teammates hurting too i'm hurting but i'm like whatever having a good run 
same thing, crash at a 14. And I'm like, oh, defeat it. My teammate, you know, was doing so bad that we had to sub her out the next day. Like, I had to sub someone else in. And so I was like, a physical injury? Yeah. And I was oh, like, man. and I'm, I'm feeling it. And I'm like, okay, another day, I got this. Like, I have to finish top 20 to get a next heat. And I was, I was like, right on the cusp. I was like, floating between 18, 19, 20, 21, like in that realm. So I'm like, okay. Um, next thing you know, crash again. On the third one. On the third one. Oh, man. By hundreds of a second, beat the person behind me who didn't crash, who had a good run, and got top 20. So I got another run. And the whole German crowd, like when I say like I have fans there, it's like hilarious. Like there's people with like my photo that like printed out and like want my autograph and stuff. So it's like really cool. Like shout out to my German fans because um, <laughs> I don't have them here like that. But and the whole crowd, like right, I wasn't gonna win. Like yeah. the Germ Germans were one, two, and like one, two, and three winning, and the whole crowd was like wanted me to succeed. You could hear everybody in the whole freaking place was yeah. like you got this. Like I could feel it. Right. And I'm like, oh, and I'm like praying. I'm like, Lord, like, please, like, please let me figure this out. I got this, but I'm feeling defeated. I'm fighting it. Everyone's feeling bad for me. Right. But I'm like, no, like I can do it. What do you think happens on the fourth one? You crashed in the fourth one. I crashed in the fourth one. Oh man. I crashed in 13 now occur right before it. So oh. it was much more violent. It was much more worse. My teammate, um, did get ice burned. So imagine like you're going 80 miles an hour on ice that it just burns your skin. So it just like exposes and burns your skin. Oh so God. she has a massive burn that like she has a scar and everything now. She's feeling it. I'm feeling it. I my parents are there. My parents flew all the way to Germany to watch me compete world championships. They saw I this. didn't even get across the finish line this time. Like mm. I had to be escorted by medical personnel like in the back, and I'm sitting there and I'm just like defeated. Yeah. And I and I like share that because I've had a lot of success. I've I have medals and things that I've done that this year that I've never been able to accomplish in the past. But I fail and failure is a real thing. And I was like major depressed for like a day. I was like, how am I supposed to show my face? Like I'm a failure. Like I, I didn't even finish. I mean, I got top 20, which was awesome. Yeah. Despite crashing four times. And then I was told, oh, like you made history, Riley. Like, oh, give me something positive. Oh, no, no one's ever crashed four times in a row um, in a world championships. And I'm like, ha ha, like oh, so glad to be known That's, for that. Yeah. Um, and so oh, like coming off of that, like that's basically how I really ended this past season, which stinks. And it's like, again, and so life lesson for anyone that's going through this, like, what do you do? Right. Like, how do you respond? And you have you have two ways of responding. You either let that defeat you and you stay there or you take that, you internalize it, you feel what you need to feel and you keep going. And so yeah. that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm not going to I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm not going to let failure hold me back. I'm not going to let the fear of what other people think of me, right? Yeah. Like the comments that people are going to say, even hearing like, oh, you must not be good. It's like, no, I made a mistake. I'm not immune to that. And I have to keep going. I have to keep fighting. So um, it was rough, but I always believe that everything happens for a reason. I don't know what that reason is yet. <laughs> I haven't right. It hasn't come to full fruition, like some yeah. other things in my life. Um, and maybe I will know or Lord, maybe I won't. But um, maybe it's character development. Yeah, it, it taught me. It did. Can't win all the time. No, and it taught me. It taught you how to lose. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing you know, I've I look at like some of the most successful people on earth probably failed thousands and thousands of times. And you never see that stuff. That stuff never makes it out to the headlines of the news or any of that stuff. Normally, it's just like their their wins, right? And for example, like Thomas Edison failed probably thousands of times to try to make the light bulb before he finally made the light bulb yeah. and look at that like that's changed the entire planet forever because he kept he kept yeah. trying you know so I, I have a feeling that you'll you'll make it you're gonna make it yeah you just gotta you just gotta dust yourself off you know the it was funny we were actually talking the other day we had a, a some training going on and uh our sergeant major actually brought up a uh a movie um rocky yeah. And he talks about in the movie, he's like, it's not about, you know, he's like, he's like the real key is I can't quote the exact quote, but it's basically like the, the most important thing in life is about how many hits you can take and still dust yourself off and get up and keep going just despite how painful the experiences yeah. were. Right. And I think that being able to take a hit and like your ability to rebound from from hard situations is is a hundred percent it you know because 
we're all going to fail. I failed miserably. Yeah. It took me seven years to get into the military and I kept trying. And, and like now look at me, like I was not able to even get, I couldn't even enlist because I just couldn't get in. Right. And like now, um, now we're, where we're at, you know? So, uh, but, uh, yeah, we're just, you know, we gotta just keep going and keep trying and keep pushing and, and things will work out eventually. I think that what you've been doing is awesome. What, what time are we at anyway? Uh, Almost one and a half hours. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we. It it's fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll it be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. Like, I tell you an hour. I'm like, trust me, I'm a talker. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. I'm, I'm right there with you. I just try to, I try to limit it to not too crazy because then it's just like a shit ton of editing. But he'll, he'll be fine. He'll be able to be good. Um, and I really wanted people to get your full story yeah. because I, not only is it beneficial for me because I wanted to learn about what you've experienced and like mm -hmm. all the things you've done because I've been seeing you all over the place, <laughs> like on billboards and posters yeah. and on Instagram and everything. And um, I've always like, man, who is who is this Riley girl? Like, what is her, what's the deal? Like, I want to learn like what's going on because I see you everywhere. Um, and I, I know you've been busy as, as crap and just like constantly doing stuff. Um, so yeah, I think, I think more than likely, I know this was a tough one. This, this past experience, I know it's tough, but I think that you're, I think that experience is going to be an integral part of your character development and of your just your progression you know because i think what will happen more than likely is you'll bounce back from this because yeah. i've seen i mean obviously you've bounced back from a lot of adversity mm -hmm. um and facing adversity makes us stronger oh yeah it builds character it builds character and it just it makes us more resilient yeah. and i think that you're probably more resilient now than you were before yeah. you know and and going down the road regardless of if you win or lose, like you will still continue to become more resilient. And I think that, you know, especially if you keep this drive, you maintain this, this like driving force mm -hmm. that you've got. Cause you're, you are a, a force of will that I've seen, which is, I think awesome, not only for our community, but also for young women. And I think that is super yeah. important to have good, strong female role models out there yep. that are getting after it, that are doing awesome things and being very successful because that, like you said, it motivates other people to want to go harder and want to do better and want to do more things and try things they may be afraid to do, you know, and that, that is cool. So, um, you know, I, obviously I wish you all the success in your endeavors. I will try to keep up with what's going on. You've obviously got my wife's number and my number and you're welcome to come down anytime. Like if you ever need to get away from everything and like <laughs> decompress or go to the beach or whatever, like, um, but yeah, again, I, I, you know, I appreciate you, you taking the time to, to come tell your story and, uh, to share some of your experiences. Cause I know I didn't know enough about it. I wanted to learn and hopefully this provides some, some perspective and, and insight onto like what kind of makes you tick. Yeah as a person because you know it's hard to get to know people on instagram from a 30 second clip you know it's really hard to get to know people like that but i think that this long form kind of thing where somebody's able to actually tell their story like where are you from what kind of what was your upbringing like what are your parents like where'd you live what what kind of things were you passionate about did you play sports did this these things are important and it kind of like gives people a better paints a better picture for like what kind of a person you are you know? Yeah. And okay, I just thank you so much for creating a platform where all different kinds of Marines or service members or people are able to share that because we all are uncommon folk from all over the world sure. that share a common interest of wanting to join the military. And I think it's also very important to be your authentic self. And that's why I share those stories about failure or I laugh or I'm bubbly or I, I, I share things, right? Because if I can be authentic, then people can relate to me. And, yes. you know, I don't want to stand up here and be like, oh, I'm so great. I, I succeed all the time. I have all these accolades. It's like, no, I've gone through real life experiences just yeah. like the next person. Maybe you're not a bobsledder, but you've experienced like failure in your sport. Sure. That was high school or wherever that was, or even in your job, right? Yeah. Like we all are able as people to relate and understand like the mindset that we have to want to get after it and to be better and to ultimately be a servant leader of what that looks like. So just, I'm so happy that I was able to do this. Like, I just want to encourage you to keep going. I can't wait to see all the great people that, like, you keep having on. And I just really hope that we're able to touch as many lives as possible to, like, let people know, like, this organization is one for any and everybody. Doesn't matter where you're from, 
what your upbringing was. Like yeah. we're able to be a family and yeah. we're going to get you to win. So unless yes. you hate winning, yeah. then maybe it's like, a good place for you. Yeah, if you don't like winning, maybe you need to find somewhere else. But yeah. I think if you want to win some stuff or you want to win, like this is definitely, yeah. this. you're in the right spot. But yeah, again, 100%, like I agree. Like, it, you know, we, especially as the Marine Corps, we, we got people from all walks of life. Mm-hmm. We don't care what you look like. We don't care where you're from. We don't care if you have parents. If you don't have parents, we don't care if you're rich, if you're poor. We don't care like, you know, what side of the aisle politically you're on. We don't care about any of that stuff. We care, like, are you a good person? Are you willing to work hard? And are you get, trying to get after it and be a better person than you were when you got here? Are you trying to make the world a better place than it was when you arrived? Yeah. Like that kind of stuff. And 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 just, do you want to be part of a team? Mm-hmm. You want to be a part of the winning team. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's that's what it's about, man. And supporting each other and just being, being a good person. Because a lot of the times people forget, like the main goal of the Marine Corps Specifically for my experience, the main goal in Marine Corps is not to keep everybody in the Marine Corps. It's to make yeah. better citizens of society so that when they do get out eventually and inevitably one day, that they go back out into society as better people. Mm-hmm. And then the more better citizens that we have out in the country, out there in society, the better it is. Because it's like offsetting the negative people that are out there, right? Because there's yeah. unfortunately going to be that too. You know, so that's that's in my mind you know, I think what the purpose of the Marine Corps outside of war fighting is, is to just make people, make better citizens for America, you know? Um, so again, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming by and, and talking to me for an hour and a half here, on the, <laughs> here at the, the VFW in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Um, and you know, I, I look forward to seeing what other awesome endeavors you do and like seeing you travel across the world, representing the United States and the Marine Corps and, and uh, maybe we'll work together one day, do something. I don't know. We'll fi- we'll find something out. We'll see. We're on the same page with a lot, so yeah, we'll we'll see where we we end up. The Marine Corps might stick to a choice. Yeah, who knows? People together maybe, and do something really cool. Maybe we'll go to Fleet Week one week or one year, and then blow everybody's minds because we'll both be there, like in dress blues. And yeah, stay same. tuned. We'll, stay tuned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But anyway, again, thank you again, and uh, we'll see you guys here in the next episode. Bye.